Friends, on this final Sunday of Eastertide, we say again what Christians have said for generations. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Please stand in the God calls us to worship. Some with laughter and songs of joy. God calls up us to worship. Some from a sense of obligation or habit. God calls us to worship. Some with hearts heavy with grief. God calls us to worship. Some with distraction or exhaustion. God calls us to worship. Some with eagerness and enthusiasm. God calls us to worship. Some with stress, loneliness, or depression. As God's dearly loved children, we bring all of our joy and pain, hurt and hope. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus Christ to our lonely and confused world. Yet we acknowledge
In your name we pray. In the life, death, and forgiveness, oops, sorry. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we are assured that there is no sin so terrible that God cannot forgive. No hurt so terrible that God cannot heal. God accepts, God forgives, and God sets free. Believe in the good news of the gospel. And as we have received the peace of Christ through God's forgiveness this morning, let us extend that to one another, saying, The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May be seated. I don't know if I saw any little people out there. We, oh, we do have some little people, they're saying. <laughs> maybe a while ago, maybe one of you. Okay, well, let us go on to our prayer for elimination. To prepare our hearts for the hearing of God's word, let us pray. O oh God, by your spirit, tell us what we need to hear, and show us what we ought to do, to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Listen now to a reading from John chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may, so that they may be one, as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. (laughs) 
Our second reading this morning comes to us from the prophet Isaiah. Uh, it may seem like a little bit of an odd uh, scripture verse, but I ask that you bear with me. Um, it has a lot of seraphs and altars and um, things like that, but we'll get to the explanation in a few minutes and uh, as to why I chose it. Uh, but for now, listen to the prophet Isaiah chapter 6, starting at verse 1. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, and this is Isaiah speaking now, woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed you and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard of the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So it's a big few weeks for many in our community. Families have come into town. Massive quantities of food have been prepared. And our lives are busy with open houses and parties. Graduation is upon us. Now this is a significant time for all of you graduates. But you don't need one more person to tell you that. <laughs> so we're not going to do that today. Rather, we will pray with you, we will love you, and we will wish you well on the next part of your journey. What is also important for us, your church, your faith community, is that we share in your celebration as we reaffirm our commitment made to you when you were baptized whether it was one we made with our own lips here, or whether it was one that another congregation made for you on our behalf. And it's a commitment that we would care for you and help you pursue God and God's ways in the world. And how fitting on a day like today that we would have the text from Isaiah. This story of Isaiah might seem kind of odd to our modern ears because it is filled with symbolism and foreign imagery. But if we gave ourselves a little lesson in ancient Hebrew, we would see that this is simply a way of God calling Isaiah to follow him where he was to serve. Now, it is what in the church that we call a call story. In it, we find Isaiah in a temple, and here it is here where he experiences something extraordinary. Isaiah has a face-to-face -face encounter with God. He's shocked, he's in awe, and he can't believe that it's happening. Once he realizes that it is happening, he yells of his unworthiness to God because he realizes how unfit he is to be in God's presence and he confesses that to God. He says, woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. God then makes him clean by taking that coal from the altar in the temple, uh, a seraph actually, and bringing it to his lips. Because God's presence was, uh, if you remember this from Old Testament Sunday school, the temple was the holy, and there was the holy of holies, and in that holy of holies was an altar where they sacrificed to God. And they took a coal off of that altar and brought it to Isaiah's lips and cleansed him. When Isaiah realizes that he's no longer simply a sinful man, but God who has come, has come to make him clean, he then volunteers to be sent as a prophet to the people of Judah. 
Now that's a whole lot to have happened when Isaiah was probably just going to the temple to pay his respects to God. But this day was different. This day, God had other plans for Isaiah. I think at different points in our lives, we yearn to see God's face because there seems to be no clarity about what we are to be or what we are to do. We want God to just tell us so we don't have this nagging or anxious fear about our futures. And at other times in our lives, when our lives are just fine, God shows up in unexpected ways, challenging us to follow the ways that we don't believe are feasible or perhaps even rational. Most of us will never have an experience of God like Isaiah did. For most of us, if we even have an interaction with God that points us in the general direction of where we're to go with our lives, it's a gift. It's a gift to treasure. It can be such a mystery, trying to find God's voice in our world and in our lives. Yet with this call story of Isaiah today, we're reminded that God comes to us, that God is with us. Wherever we are, whatever place we are in our lives, God will come. That is the promise here in Isaiah, and that is the promise that Jesus Christ, who came among us a long time ago, and that's the promise of the Holy Spirit that is here with us now. All of us are called to extraordinary lives. Not simply ordinary, because we have been called, you have been called by God. And you have been empowered to do God's work. We listen for God to come to us just as the seraphim came to Isaiah and touched his lips with a hot coal. So God comes to all of us, and our hope as the community of faith is that we have given you the tools to dig deep into yourselves and to know God's voice within and around you. During graduation, which was yesterday, so it may have happened yesterday, for some of you, some of, one, somebody's having it this afternoon, or in the months to come, so let's just focus on the months to come. I'm guessing that you'll be pondering a lot about what you will do with your life, what kind of work you want to do, what you will get as a job when you graduate, what pays well in our day and age, particularly who is hiring. One theologian has said, the call was decided in our very creation. We can resist, but we will not be whole until we answer God and become what God has created us to be and to do. We can ignore God's voice, but you, you, will not be whole until you respond to that call. Reflecting on God's call in our lives of who we, be, how, who we are to be and how to care for God's world is not only just for them, but you knew that. It's for all of us to periodically check in, to look at our lives and figure out if we're doing what God is calling us to be and to do. God calls each of us to particular ministries, and our work in the world is more than something we do to pay the bills and then serve God with whatever we have left in the church. Our entire lives, as people of faith, are called to service in response to God's love for us. As teachers, as bankers, as managers, as electricians, as parents, whatever God has called us, is the place that we are to serve God. One of my favorite theologians, Frederick Buechner, said it best when he wrote, all of who we are is God's. All of our lives belong to God. The place God call, calls you to is the place where your deep gladness, what brings you joy, 
and the world's deepest hunger and need meet. Your greatest joy and the world's deepest need. Where you find that place is where God calls. Most of us will not meet God face to face like Isaiah did. For most of us, for you, it will be in the whispers of the wind, the confirmation of friends and family, and our own deep reflection on what does bring us joy and where that joy can meet the greatest needs of our world. It is where life has meaning, where life on this earth can work toward bringing justice and hope and joy and mercy and peace to others. The following poem that I'm going to read and end with here uh, today was written by a woman named Catherine Hawker, a poet, and she wrote it in honor of graduates at a local high school. But it is not simply the call for them, but for all of us. She writes, Life looms ahead of us, huge and uncertain. In the confusion, we must listen for the voice of God. Who can hear the voice of God calling? Here I am, send me. The expectations of our friends feel so overwhelming, luring us to make choices for our own comfort. Who can focus on the call to serve God? Here I am, send me. Hunger, greed, hopelessness prevail in our world, making it difficult to believe that God still dances. Who can speak the good news in the face of evil? Here I am, send me. Our voice seems so small against the misery we hear. Wars and famine and abuse seem dominant. Who can be heard above the crying? Here I am, send me. The world is waiting to hear the promise of God. A life of justice, peace, love for all of God's children. Who will choose this life with God? Here I am. Send me. So may you, graduates, and all of us here have the courage to say, Here I am. Send me. Lord, send me, use me, wherever that may be. And may it bring you great joy as you serve God and point to that kingdom that God so desires for us all. Amen.
You may be seated. Unless you are a high school graduate, I invite you to come forward. And I actually invite the parents to come forward as well. Or grand, uh, two older adults who have taken care of you over the past years. Come on forward. So why don't we line up here across the front? That'll be easiest. Behind the table, but on the floor. Your parents need to stand by you, so if you could spread out all the way across the front. No, sorry. All right. I'm going to stand over here so you all can see them. Oh, we got the Browns. We have lots of balcony families here who are usually up in the balcony. I grew up as a balcony kid, so I get that. So friends, on this important day, the day when we mark your leaving high school and stepping into new ventures, we ask God's blessing for you and are reminded of this verse from Romans 8. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor the things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. And so as uh, this is a special day, we invite you to share with the congregation uh, your name, where you've graduated from, and uh, what you plan to do uh, over the summer, really in the next fall, the next chapter of your life, and what you are hoping to study or do. So you get to be first. And you can just hold this and speak right in there. Um, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Closer okay. to your mouth. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Aziga Pepple, and I'm going to be attending Bowling Green State and, um, to study accounting. My name is James Pepple. I graduated from Finley High School, and I'm attending Purdue University in Aerospace Engineering. I'm Lily Anderson. I graduated from Finley High School, and I will be attending Denison University to study theater and business and communications. Hi, my name is Kayla Butterworth. I graduated from Finley High School, and I'm going to Malone University to swim and to study physician's assisting. Um, my name is Sophie Evans. I graduated from Finley High School. I will be attending Ohio University and I will be majoring in health sciences undecided. I'm Spencer Evans. I graduated from Finley High School. I'm gonna be um, attending Ohio University in the fall and I'm gonna plan on majoring in business undecided. I'm Liz Stahl. I plan on going to BG in the fall for marine sciences, and I graduated from Finley. My name is Carter Fox. <laughs> graduated from Finley High School. I uh, plan on going to Michigan State University studying chemistry. Hi, I'm Abby Federici. I graduated from Finley High School. I'm planning on going to Ashland University to major in athletic training. I'm Todd Federici. I graduated from Finley High School. I'm going to go to Ohio Northern University to study mechanical engineering. Hello, my name is Sam Federici. I graduated from Finley High School. I plan on playing soccer at Heidelberg University and majoring in business. My name is McLean Brown. I'll be attending Miami University in the fall, and I will be graduating from Van Buren High School in about four hours. <laughs> I'm Nick Kuhlman, and uh, I graduated from Finley High School, and uh, I will be attending the University of Akron studying nutrition and dietetics. Awesome. You can just turn it off for me. Thank you. So many, many years ago, a lot of you made a promise 
uh, when these folks were baptized. And now on behalf of other places where they were baptized, you continue to make that promise. And so today I ask you to reaffirm uh, the baptismal promise that you made to them and for you parents as well. We ask that you make a commitment this day to continue to lift up, to talk about, to equip and pray for the ongoing faith journey of these young people. Will you commit to this support? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. So today, um, we're doing something a little bit uh, out of the ordinary and so instead of offering you a Bible and we know you received one in third grade and probably a confirmation so you have enough of those and you could just download an app and get a Bible there too um, we want to offer you this gift of a blanket uh, you've learned over the course of your faith journey um, and we'll need to be continually reminded that God is with you. And so we want you to take this with you on the next part of your journey. And when you put it on, to remember that you are always covered in God's love. No matter where you are, whether you fail or whether you succeed, whether you know what the heck you're doing with your life or whether you don't, and wh whoever you are, you're enough. You are enough as you are created, and God loves you, and God desires for you to know God's love and to be encouraged by it. So, I have different colors in here, and so instead of having you all <coughs> trade later, uh, when we're done here, you can just come up and grab one and take it with you. But before we do that, I want to... Close us with a prayer of blessing. And that's why I invited you up here, parents, because you've all done phenomenal jobs of raising these kids in faith, um, of caring for them and of loving them and of following through on the commitment you made when you baptized them. So why don't you lay your hands on them as we pray again um, for this continued part of their journey. Let us pray. God of creation, pour out your spirit on these students as they enter a new period of life and of faith. Bless these seniors as they begin new ventures as faithful people, hearing your words, responding in thankfulness by proclaiming your love and grace through word and deed, and serving all people while doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with you. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and our Lord. Amen. Thank you. You may return to your seats. You can take a blanket now if you want. Oh boy, and I made a mistake because one of the people who serves us often is Andrew Peschel. And I know he doesn't want to be given atten uh, attention, but Andrew, will you please stand? And will your parents please stand? And let's applaud him as well, graduating from Finley. He was running the sound so y'all could hear what we're doing up here. We give thanks for you, Andrew. And now as we receive this morning's offering, let us give of our love and our labor to God.
Almighty God, receive the gifts we bring in gratitude for your astounding goodness. Make our lives to be an accept acceptable offering in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. As we come to pray, we share a couple of concerns uh, for those in our community of faith. We especially pray today for Connie Cramp, who um, fell this past week and broke a shoulder and dislocated another. Um, and she went to Birch Haven yesterday and will be there for a number of weeks uh, doing rehab. So we pray for her um, as she recovers. And I'm sure she would enjoy visitors in this long haul ahead of her. Let us now go to God in prayer. Faithful and loving God, there is no place we can go in the world or in our hearts where you are not with us. We so often forget your incredible power, your abundant grace, and your pervasive love, but you do not forget us. You continue to pursue us when we follow our own ways. Your light always shines in the darkness, O oh God. Help us to follow it in the world and offer our own light to make it brighter. We pray to do, today for those who need your care, for those whose daily struggle seems too much to bear. Offer, offer them deep and powerful hope and the courage to carry on. For those who are filled with joy, let them know it comes from you. For those who need your healing, may your touch of care and courage offer rest and peace. And we remember, O oh God, this weekend, those who have served our country with duty and with passion. Be with those who still serve, keeping them out of harm's way. Be with our country's leaders, that they would lead with integrity and minds that see all your people, all your children who need your care. Give them insight into how to best lead us. We thank you for this large community and the smaller pockets of people here that make our lives richer. We thank you for their faithfulness of calling each of us and equipping us for your service. Continue to help us to find new ways to open our doors and care for the strangers, for the outcasts, and for those on the margins. We offer these prayers, our joys, and our concerns to you, O oh God, Redeemer and Sustainer, both never leaving us and continually calling us out into the world to love as we have been loved. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Amen. As we turn uh, to leave worship and to serve God in the world, a couple of really exciting announcements about our life together. Uh, I'm really giddy about what's going to be happening this summer for faith formation. Uh, you may pick up a flyer um, on the table as you head out of worship. Uh, we've got uh, documentary movies showing and offering um, reflection afterwards for faith. We've got takeout church that's going to be happening this summer where we will have a pizza box next week at worship uh, that will give you all you need to bring faith into your home and out into the world this summer between prayers and coloring and thankful beach balls and things like that um, so that you, no matter where you are this summer, can take the church and God with you. Oh, and the best part is we have flat Jesus. I know. He's going to be on a stick. And so no matter where you are, we want you to take pictures with flat Jesus. 
And then you just tag us on Facebook or uh, Instagram. I don't even think we have an Instagram account, but we could set one up. And you can tag us there. And then everybody will get to see where Jesus is in the world. I mean, it's funny, but it's also really serious when you think about it, right? We're, we're taking Jesus. Um, we're going to have some family fun events. Next Sunday, Jason, my husband, and myself invite you to come to our house for uh, a Pentecost picnic between 3 and 5. The address is in the newsletter. Um, so please join us. Bring a chair, bring a dish, and bring a drink. That's all you got to do. And then, oh, and on Pentecost Sunday, wear red. Wear red. Oh, and we are going to be having um, the Peru folks who are heading to Peru in like three weeks, which is crazy to think about, are going to be um, having a bake sale and some other things going on next Sunday. So look for them and find ways to support, support them uh, in heading to Peru uh, this summer. So let us turn uh, to our stand and turn to our final hymn as we leave to serve God in the world. I invite the, the seniors, you included James, to kind of join me around this table here as we leave worship. Yes. This is a table that we hope has shaped you. Uh, this is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, who offers all of us life. Now, this table can be found in many places, and we hope that you will find another one uh, that you can come around and be reminded of how much God loves you and loves our world. And as you leave worship, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever, and go out into that world with peace, and have courage, and hold on to what is good Return to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak.
honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say, amen. You guys want to head out?